was in a jail cell in Manhattan that he apparently took his own life. This can only be the tip of the iceberg. Jeffrey Epstein, a name that has sparked endless controversies and continues to send shivers down the spines of the elite. I wanted Jeffrey Epstein to stay alive for two reasons. One, so that his victims could get their day in court. And two, I wanted him to snitch on all his high profile friends. But didn't he die, you might ask? Why are people still talking about him? We already had questions about his whole operation. Now, we have additional questions about how he died. This morning, the question on many minds. How did Jeffrey Epstein die while in federal custody? Well, recent online chatter suggests that Jeffrey Epstein might still be around. Picture of Jeffrey Epstein that was found. This is real, folks. This is actually a photograph of him on August 30th. But before opening that box, let me refresh your memory about the guy himself. A registered offender who made a fortune as a hedge fund manager in the 1980s and 90s. Epstein gained notoriety as a wealthy financier with powerful connections. However, his reputation took a dark turn when he faced allegations of sick minors. The first accusation was made in 2005. Years later, Epstein was discovered deceased in his cell with a bedsheet around his neck. But recently, a video surfaced showing someone who resembles Epstein alive and well. Given the conspiracy theories surrounding his supposed suicide, this revelation isn't entirely surprising. So get ready for a roller coaster ride through this bizarre saga. But first, let's get to know the man behind the headlines. Epstein was well known and influential. Movie directors, actors, politicians, princes, and even presidents. Jeffrey Epstein was born on January 20th, 1953, in Brooklyn, New York. He didn't really have an out of the ordinary life before stuff went down. Growing up in an ordinary neighborhood, Epstein displayed remarkable intelligence from a young age. He graduated from Lafayette High School at the age of just 16. Even though he started college at Cooper Union and New York University, he left without receiving a degree. Epstein then ventured into teaching, securing a position at the Dalton School in 1974. However, his tenure was short-lived as he was terminated in 1976 for the exact reasons cited as poor performance. He then got into finance after meeting Alan Greenberg, the CEO of Bear Stearns, during his teaching days. This led to a job at Bear Stearns in 1976, where he quickly became an advisor to some very rich clients. But that wasn't all. In 1981, Epstein started his own financial consulting firm called the Intercontinental Assets Group, Inc., which claimed to help people get back money that was stolen. Around this time, he had started claiming that he was a spy, although there was no proof of that, and it was considered a joke on his end. But looking at what he did later, it almost makes you wonder if there might be some truth to it, or he was just a blackmailer and not exactly a spy. Not to forget, Epstein's connections with powerful people and lots of traveling in the mid-1980s made people wonder if he was really involved in intelligence work. But that wasn't all. He also faced some troubles in his financial career. In 1987, he got involved with Tower Financial Corporation, a company that turned out to be running a big Ponzi scheme worth half a billion dollars. People talked about Epstein being connected to it, but he managed to keep his distance, leaving Tower a few years before it fell apart in 1993. In 1988, Epstein started J. Epstein & Company, later called the Financial Trust Company. He mainly worked on handling the money of really rich people. He also became a money advisor to Leslie Wexner, the CEO of L Brands and Victoria's Secret. By the mid-1990s, Epstein moved his company to the US Virgin Islands, a move people think was a trick to pay less in taxes. As the early 2000s came, Epstein got into more things like media companies, funding securities, hedge funds, and new businesses. He also created the Jeffrey Epstein Sixth Foundation, a non-profit that gave millions to places like Harvard University. Until now, it's all normal. But here is where it gets really interesting. Things took a bad turn in Epstein's life when he got into legal trouble for accusations of abusing young girls. The first accusation came in 2005 when a parent in Palm Beach, Florida, accused him of sex 
abusing their 14-year-old. But that didn't stop there. Later in 2008, he was charged with trying to get a minor into prosecution in Florida. He pleaded guilty in open court. He agreed to serve a total of 18 months in the Palm Beach detention facility. The same year, Epstein pleaded guilty to a felony charge of solicitation of prostitution involving a minor and served 13 months in prison, during which he was granted work release. And just so you know, he was also registered as a confirmed sender. The plea deal drew renewed scrutiny after investigative reporter Julie K. Brown's series in the Miami Herald shed light on Epstein's victims and the influential figures supporting lenient sentencing. In January 2024, court papers related to Epstein were unsealed as part of a defamation lawsuit filed by Virginia Jeffrey against Ghislaine Maxwell. The documents included testimonies from Epstein's victims, witnesses, and evidence relevant to a previously settled 2015 case. Epstein's high-profile social circle added complexity to the case, involving figures like Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, and Prince Andrew. Trump, in a 2002 interview, described Epstein as a terrific guy who enjoyed the company of beautiful women. However, he claimed to have distanced himself from Epstein in recent years. Clinton, on the other hand, acknowledged flying on Epstein's plane, but denied knowledge of criminal activities. Prince Andrew was also linked to Epstein since 1999. And not so surprisingly, he faced scrutiny for their relationship. After Epstein's death, Prince Andrew distanced himself and expressed abhorrence for the alleged crimes. Well, it all makes sense because why wouldn't they keep a distance? In a Newsnight interview, he denied allegations of sexual contact with Virginia Jeffrey, but admitted it was wrong to visit Epstein in 2010. At the end of the day, with the benefit of all the hindsight that one could have, it was definitely the wrong thing to do. But at the time, I felt it was the, it was the honorable and right thing to do. I admit fully that, 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 that my judgment was probably colored by my tendency to be too honorable. Following public criticism, Prince Andrew announced stepping back from public duties for the foreseeable future. But here is where it gets big and crazy. Jeffrey Epstein's case witnessed the unsealing of court documents expected to include names of over 150 individuals linked to Epstein became public knowledge. And as I mentioned before, there were names of powerful figures such as Prince Andrew, Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, and others involved in the case. The names and details contained in these court documents provided insight into Epstein's social circle and connections, shedding light on the extent of his associations. Now, let's move on and discuss how these names made a place in those documents. Jeffrey Epstein had owned an entire island. Yes, it gets as crazy as it sounds. Little St. James, also known as Epstein's Island, used to be a fancy place in the US Virgin Islands. People from all over the world, like celebrities and rich folks, would visit on private planes and helicopters. But locals didn't see it that way. They called it Pete Island because of some terrible things happening there. The island became known for stuff like trafficking and abuse. Attorney General Denise George exposed a concerning truth about the apparently peaceful island, identifying it as a covert hub for trafficking. Alarmingly, Figures such as Epstein and his associates managed to engage in illicit activities there without facing law enforcement scrutiny for an extended period. A lawsuit filed in January 2020 revealed Epstein's involvement in a reprehensible trafficking scheme spanning over two decades, exploiting children as young as 11 on his Caribbean estates. The Attorney General also worked on exposing the intricate system of companies utilized to conceal these criminal endeavors. In 2023, Ghislaine Maxwell, who was linked to Epstein, had a trial for trafficking, bringing more attention to the island's dark side. She got convicted, and people started looking closer at what happened on Little St. James. Little St. James, with its coral reefs and blue waters, went through big changes under Epstein's ownership he built lots of buildings, pools, and even a strange-looking structure people called a temple. Everyone had different ideas about what the temple was for, like secret rooms or weird rituals, 
but some said it was just a study and music room. Not only that, Epstein also bought another island nearby in 2016. The U.S. Virgin Islands, where Epstein registered as a defender, got attention for not stopping what was happening on the islands. According to all the currently available reports, life on Jeffrey Epstein's island, Little St. James, seemed like a mix of luxury and secrecy. Before his 2008 conviction, Epstein visited the island two or three times a month, staying for several days. Former employees described it as a peaceful retreat where Epstein would casually stroll around in flip-flops with meditative music playing and women often sunbathing topless. The island always had women around, sometimes young and always attractive. They would arrive on a boat called the Lady Ghislaine, reportedly named after Epstein's associate Ghislaine Maxwell. The staff, numbering around 70, wore black or white polo shirts and had to keep everything they saw confidential. They were strictly instructed to stay out of Epstein's sight when working and were not allowed in his offices, one of which housed a closely guarded steel safe. Epstein had a peculiar interest in what he called pirate treasure, which referred to old rum bottles and crockery scattered around the island. He would pay his staff for interesting finds in good condition, ranging from $100 to $1,000. Miles Alexander, who managed the island with his wife Kathy for several years, spoke to the Daily Mail, describing Epstein as a kind man. The couple emphasized their discretion in their role, stating they never witnessed anything inappropriate. When hired, they were instructed with the motto, what Jeffrey wants, Jeffrey gets. Honestly, these guys are loyal to a fault. Anyways, back to the topic. Epstein hosted a range of famous names on the island, including theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, Nobel laureate Lawrence Krauss, comedian Chris Tucker, and Prince Andrew of the United Kingdom. Guests would arrive at St. Thomas Airport and then be shuttled to Little St. James on one of Epstein's black helicopters. Apparently, he spared no expense for his guests, even modifying a submarine for Professor Hawking to experience an underwater tour. However, what these guests might not have been aware of was Epstein's overly watchful eye on them. Epstein reportedly had surveillance cameras strategically placed throughout his properties, including his private island, Little St. James. The cameras were part of what has been described as a blackmail scheme to gather compromising material on powerful friends and influential individuals who visited his residences. These hidden cameras were intended to record guests' activities, potentially capturing compromising situations to manipulate or control those individuals later. Reports suggest that Epstein's surveillance network was extensive, with hundreds of security cameras positioned on Little St. James and inside his Manhattan mansion. The goal was to create a repository of potentially damaging footage, providing Epstein with a tool for coercion or extortion. Epstein had extensive surveillance inside his home, including tiny pinhole cameras. I looked on the cameras and I saw toilet, toilet, bed, bed, toilet, bed. I'm like, I am never going to use the restroom here. But why didn't anyone do something to stop this guy? Well, people did notice Jeffrey Epstein's alleged trafficking activities, but various factors contributed to a lack of intervention. Locals on St. Thomas, where Epstein's island is located, started gossiping early about his activities, referring to his private jets as the Lolita Express. Even scuba divers approaching the island reported being patrolled by security guards. However, Epstein's influence and the secretive nature of his actions made it challenging for people to speak up. Even airport staff on St. Thomas witnessed Epstein boarding his private jet with what appeared to be underage girls, yet they didn't know who to approach. Former employees like the Alexanders who ran the island grew uneasy over time. They observed young women, sometimes dressed inappropriately, and Epstein's requests to bring in female guests without proper documentation raised red flags. Despite growing suspicions, several factors contributed to the lack of intervention. Authorities attempted to investigate but Epstein's refusal to allow officers onto the island and his control over communication with the outside world hindered the process. 
Epstein also made employees sign confidentiality agreements, creating a barrier for law enforcement. Moreover, his purchase of Great St. James was seen as a cover-up for his activities on Little St. James. The islands became a central point in a global grooming scheme, as described in lawsuits filed by victims. Authorities did attempt to investigate, but Epstein's manipulation, legal maneuvering, and financial influence posed significant challenges. Even after his death in 2019, the legal battles over his estate continued. In 2022, the US Virgin Islands filed a lawsuit against JP Morgan Chase, alleging complicity in Epstein's trafficking activities. However, the case was settled for $75 million in September 2023. The fate of Little St. James and Great St. James seemed uncertain for some time, with the islands finally being sold to an investor, Stephen Deckoff, for $60 million. Now, let's talk about how Epstein ended up offing himself in prison. Many out there are wondering if Epstein really suicided himself. The timing is so suspicious. This comes just one day after those documents were unsealed. On August 10th, 2019, in his jail cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York City, Epstein was found dead with a bedsheet around his neck. The official cause of death, according to the New York City Medical Examiner's Office, was ruled as suicide by hanging. Epstein's death sparked controversy and conspiracy theories due to the circumstances surrounding it. A Department of Justice watchdog report released by Inspector General Michael Horowitz in 2023 highlighted institutional and individual failings that allowed Epstein to die by suicide in federal custody. The report identified 13 Bureau of Prisons employees who committed misconduct and dereliction of duties leading up to Epstein's suicide, revealing negligence and operational flaws in the correctional system. Despite the official ruling of suicide, doubts and conspiracy theories persist, adding complexity to the already enigmatic legacy of Jeffrey Epstein. They weren't checking in on Epstein and they took him off Suicide watch. Why? Prison cameras reveal the accused sex trafficker went unchecked from approximately 10.30 p.m. August 9th until 6.30 a.m. the next day. The events before Jeffrey Epstein's death, as per a report from the Department of Justice released by Inspector General Michael Horowitz, show a mix of carelessness and wrongdoing. This allowed the well-connected financier to take his own life while in federal jail. Seems like a classic case of dropping the ball, letting Epstein slip through the cracks like it's no big deal. The report, out on June 27, 2023, pointed out problems in both the system and individual behavior that made an environment where Epstein could commit suicide while waiting for trial on charges of luring many girls, some just 14 years old, to his homes in New York and Florida. But his trial ended abruptly with his death. The report found 13 Bureau of Prisons employees who messed up and neglected their duties before Epstein's suicide. Because of these mistakes, Epstein was left alone and unwatched in his cell at Manhattan's Metropolitan Correctional Center from August 9, 2019 at 10.40 p.m. until he was found the next day at 6.30 a.m., hanging from what looked like a piece of linen or clothing. Besides the two guards facing charges for faking records on Epstein's routine checks, the report also brought attention to at least two other unnamed employees who might have committed crimes by falsely certifying inmate counts and rounds. However, prosecutors decided not to press charges against these newly identified employees mentioned in the report. The report exposed operational mistakes, like not giving Epstein a new cellmate and leaving him in his cell with too many bed linens, which posed a security risk and were used in his suicide. The Metropolitan Corrections Center received criticism for not properly upgrading its camera surveillance system and for being understaffed. Despite these shortcomings, the report repeated what other investigations found, no signs of foul play in Epstein's death. The report aimed to debunk conspiracy theories, suggesting Epstein was murdered to stop him from implicating others. 
Jeffrey Epstein's arrest in New York in 2019 followed a controversial 2008 deal in Florida, where he pleaded guilty to lesser state charges, avoiding federal prosecution. He served just 13 months and had the privilege of leaving the facility during the day. This sparked allegations of preferential treatment. After Epstein's death, ongoing legal actions by victims led to settlements like the $290 million agreement between J.P. Morgan Chase and Epstein's alleged victims, approved by a U.S. judge. The report exposed details surrounding Epstein's demise, revealing institutional failures and prompting questions about accountability and the need for reforms within the Bureau of Prisons. Now, there's another burning question that comes up in many people's minds. Why does Jeffrey Epstein resurface on the news so often? While alive, Epstein faced charges related to sexual crimes with underage girls, and his suicide in jail fueled speculation about his life. Recent events have revived these theories. For example, when the FBI searched Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago, some individuals on the far right quickly claimed that the judge who approved the search was Epstein's lawyer. Despite being misleading, this claim gained traction in fringe circles and even made its way to mainstream media outlets like Fox News. Jeffrey Epstein's enduring relevance in conspiracy theories is often tied to his social connections with influential figures. Conspiracists exploit these associations to depict various political events as part of hidden, sex-fueled abuses and cover-ups. The circumstances of Epstein's death, officially ruled as a suicide while in Bureau of Prisons custody, have intensified the proliferation of theories and memes. However, it's the documented facts of his crimes that position him as a central figure in the realm of fringe bogeymen. These conspiracy theories have found a haven in the current right-wing media landscape, with online engagement gravitating towards conservative sites. Figures like Alex Jones utilize Epstein's life and death to blur the lines between established facts and popular speculation, crafting narratives that align with conservative victimization themes. Epstein's connections to Trump are often left unspoken in extremist circles, using references to Epstein as a tool to undermine those critical of Trump. This tactic shapes debates within the pro-Trump community, providing validation and deflecting criticism against Trump. Extremist groups exploit Epstein's associations to spread hateful stereotypes, further eroding cultural barriers between fringe and mainstream commentators. Following Epstein's death, various conspiracy theories emerged. Let's take a look at them. His circle included some high-profile individuals. Everyone from Bill Clinton and Donald Trump all the way to famous scientists and even royalty. Recently, almost 950 pages of important court papers were opened up, shining a light on the friends of Jeffrey Epstein. These papers were part of a lawsuit from 2015, when Virginia Jeffrey accused Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's friend, of several inhumane acts. In 2022, Ghislaine Maxwell faced significant legal consequences, while Epstein took his own life in 2019 while awaiting charges related to allegations of misconduct with young girls. Among the names surfacing in the revealed court documents, some are quite well known. For instance, Prince Andrew, a member of the British royal family, faced accusations from Johanna Schoberg. She described an incident in 2001 at Jeffrey Epstein's home where Prince Andrew allegedly touched her breast during a photo with her and another accuser, Virginia Jeffrey. Alan Dershowitz, a prominent Harvard law professor, found himself accused by Jane Doe III. She claimed that Epstein compelled her to have intimate relations with Dershowitz when she was underage. The documents also shed light on Jean-Luc Brunel, a French model scout. He was awaiting trial on charges related to the rape of underage girls. But surprisingly, he died by suicide in a Paris jail in 2022. The court documents also bring forth the names of other well-known individuals. David Copperfield, the renowned magician, is mentioned as a friend of Jeffrey Epstein. 
testimonies like Johanna Schoberg's recount encounters with Copperfield at one of Epstein's residences. Former US President Bill Clinton is referenced in the documents, although without accusations of any illegal conduct. The papers describe a plane trip involving Clinton, Epstein, Geoffrey, and others to one of Donald Trump's casinos. Speaking of Donald Trump, the former president is mentioned in the records, but he faces no accusations. The documents also highlighted physicist Stephen Hawking through an email from Epstein to Ghislaine Maxwell in January 2015. Additionally, the court papers refer to the late pop icon Michael Jackson, seen at Epstein's residence. However, there are no accusations of wrongdoing against Jackson either. This being said, there is so much more that has recently come up on the surface. The fifth and final batch of court documents linked to the Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell case has been unveiled, presenting startling allegations against more notable figures. New York Judge Loretta Preska unsealed these documents in December as part of a defamation lawsuit filed by Epstein accuser Virginia Jeffrey against Maxwell. The lawsuit's outcome led to the public release of over 215 documents, shedding light on different facets of this contentious case. And now, on to the question, is he alive? Among the broken bones in Epstein's neck was the hyoid bone. Such breaks can occur in those who hang themselves, but they're more common in victims of homicide by strangulation. There are claims circulating on the internet suggesting that Jeffrey Epstein might still be alive. Some drone footage of Epstein's island, Little St. James, was reportedly posted on a YouTube page called Rusty Shackleford. And just so you know, the video was taken down right after. Apparently, this footage showed parts of the island, including two men on golf carts, with one of them looking like Epstein. Not to mention, it's being said that the video is from the 30th of August, while Epstein actually died on the 10th of August. But here's where it gets interesting. Internet detectives have raised questions about a post-mortem photograph of Epstein too, pointing out differences in the nose and ears compared to images of him when he was alive. They say that the photo might be fake or that Epstein's death was staged. Conspiracy theories surrounding Jeffrey Epstein's death persist, fueled by a variety of factors. Despite the wealthy and powerful offender being deceased for several years, far-right groups continue to invoke his name, contributing to the, this speculation. Epstein's demise, officially ruled as suicide, has become a focal point for numerous conspiracy theories. Some even say that he faked his own death and now is working as a spy or something, or probably chilling at a beach. Who knows? These theories question the circumstances of his death, with polls indicating widespread skepticism about the official narrative. Moreover, the release of new files related to Epstein's case has triggered a fresh wave of conspiracy theories. It's like a flash flood. His connections to high-profile individuals and the mysterious circumstances surrounding his suicide while awaiting trial on federal trafficking charges make him a favorite subject for conspiracists. Jeffrey Epstein's death has been a source of controversy, leading his brother to claim a cover-up by US officials. While all of this sounds too weird to be true, but sometimes the world does work like that. So that's the story of Jeffrey Epstein, a terrible guy with a complex story. What do you guys think? Is he still alive? And if you think he is, who do you think is covering for him? Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates and content like this. Your support means the world to me.